presenter is Lily Riccio. Um, so I'm going to bring her in as a panelist. And so this is my capstone presentation. It was a really, really great way to kind of end the year um, studying something I'm really passionate about. And I'm excited to share with you all today what I've been working on. Um, so for my capstone project, as you can see from this title slide, I wrote my own children's picture book and in order to pursue publishing. So writing and telling stories has always been something I've been passionate about ever since I was little. When I was little, I would put together little books to share um, to my parents. I would write plays and force my brothers to perform them. Um, and even now today, I'm pursuing a degree in film and television production, where I'm really, really excited to start taking screenwriting courses. So writing has always been a passion. And when I heard about the Capstone Project and the fact that I could pursue a passion during school hours, I knew I had to kind of take this opportunity um, in order to pursue a dream of mine, which has always been writing and publishing my own book. Um, so yeah, so I've been spending hours and hours this past semester trying to pursue this along with my mentor, Mrs. Coleman, who's been really good about sharing contacts and kind of guiding me through this industry I didn't really know much about. So today I plan to take you through all the steps that have gotten me from my initial idea all the way to reaching out to literary agents for publication. I'll be discussing the challenges I've faced as well as all the things I've learned from this experience. My first step was obviously writing the um, book and I needed to choose a concept, build my characters and decide on the goal of my book or what the lesson would be for my young audience. I quickly got to work writing my first draft, then my second, then my third, then my fourth and so on. Although my enthusiasm made my first draft a quick process, it took a lot more effort and labor to continue working again and again to make sure I was creating a story I was proud of. And when I finally felt like I had a draft I was confident with, I decided to reach out to people within the industry, seeking their advice, comments, and critiques. Two of the authors that were extremely helpful were Brenna Burns Yu and Leslie Bullion. Brenna and Leslie are both local picture book authors who extended their time to give me valuable guidance and advising for my first draft. Two of their most helpful co corrections regarding my story had to do with pacing and rhyming. Without a doubt, the most difficult aspect of my book was definitely, definitely the rhyme. I initially made my story a rhyming book because I felt it mirrored my story's lighthearted and whimsical tone. But as I began my editing process, I quickly realized that there are many rules regarding rhyme. After speaking to Brenna and Leslie, I basically restructured my entire story, which you can see there, the before and after, breaking it apart, rearranging, and making sure its rhyme followed a certain format. On top of it all, it was extremely important that the rhyming flowed nicely and was easy to read. I had to make sure the story was graceful so that my young audience wouldn't stumble over sentences. After months of editing and rereading, I had a final draft, which I'd like to read to you all today. First, let me explain my story. My story centers around a feisty little bunny named Lou who is tired of the cold winter weather and desperately wants spring to arrive. Taking off on a romp through the woods, Lou boldly declares to her forest friends that spring has begun early, despite the fact that signs of winter are all still around. Throughout the book, I explored the beauty of the changing seasons and its influence on the surrounding wildlife. In the lesson of appreciating the present beauty and being content with today's wonders is emphasized to the intended young audience. So now I'd like to share my story and read it aloud. So the title of the book is I've Decided It's Spring. Lou was tired of the cold winter weather and wanted spring as she liked that much better. So Lou set off into the wood, deciding to change the season for good. She came upon a mouse covered in snow and was determined then to give it a go. I've decided it's spring. Can you do such a thing? Miss Mouse glanced around but did not hear a sound. Where's Mr. Bear, she inquired, surely still hibernating, all grouchy and tired. 
Miss Mouse seemed to be right, as there was no brown bear in sight. So Lou let out a sigh and said her goodbye. Lou then saw a burrow covered in the snow, a perfect home for a sleeping creature below. She peeked into the den near the trees and found Mr. Bear snoring with ease. Mr. Bear looked confused and wasn't very amused. Where are the ducks in the pond? Back from migration and in the water beyond? Lou gazed towards the pond standing still and gray, showing no signs of life on this cold winter day. So, Lou let out a sigh and said her goodbye. Determined now to find some ducks, Lou trudged through the snow, her boots getting stuck. When she finally made her way to the water, Lou only discovered one small, lounging otter. I've decided it's spring. Can you do such a thing? The otter looked at the water from her log and noticed there wasn't a single frog. If it were spring, the frogs would come up from under the ice, and surely the weather would be nice. Lou peered down into the frozen pond kneeling, but could only see its thick ice ceiling. So Lou let out a sigh and said her goodbye. Lou stomped to the banks of snow as the cold winter wind began to blow. Then out of the corner of her eye, she saw a brown bird fly by. I've decided it's spring. Can you do such a thing? The bird looked down at its wing and knew it simply couldn't be spring. When winter is over, I turn yellow. After all, I'm not an ordinary fellow. Lou looked closely at the brown speckled finch, realizing there wasn't a bit of yellow, not even an inch. So Lou let out a sigh and said her goodbye. Along Lou went through a grove of tall trees, their little green needles lying about the snow at her knees. Many large branches hung overhead, but Lou could still see an open field ahead. I've decided it's spring. Can you do such a thing? The fox looked out at the snow piles, but couldn't see any rodents for miles. If it were spring, mice would be in the grass field, certainly not this concealed. The fox went back to his task, and Lou wished she dared never to ask. She never dared to ask. So Lou let out a sigh and said her goodbye. Onwards, Lou went through the forest, and soon in the distance, she heard a giggling chorus. Beyond in the field, there was a snowball fight, and Lou said, what a wonderful sight. She joined in on the fun as the game had begun, and soon her team had miraculously won. The animals then scattered and grabbed their sleds. Lou jumped on her own and off she sped. Down the snowy, glistening hills, taking tight turns and few little spills. All her forest friends shrieked with delight as they too became covered in white. Now Lou paused and had a thought. She was thankful for all the wonder every season brought. Lou smiled at the sight of winter's harmony and decided to leave the season's beauty be. Spring is quite nice, Lou said aloud, but I actually wouldn't mind winter staying around. That's the end of the book. So after I finished writing that story um, and going back and editing again and again, I could start the really exciting process of actually submitting it to publishers, and I'm going to take you through um, that process today. So, first I'll talk about the manuscript, um, which I knew very little about. At first I was inclined to pursue self-publishing, um, but eventually decided, despite its challenges, I would strive to get the book actually published through an agent and publishing agency. The first step of pursuing publication is creating your manuscript. A manuscript is essentially just the final copy of your story, which I just read. Or in other terms, it is the unpublished version of your book, which is submitted to agents for consideration. On the slide, you can see the title page of my manuscript that I sent out. According to each agency's specific guidelines, which could be found on their websites, 
I would either include the manuscript in the email's body pasted or as a PDF attachment. The next step is creating your query letter. A query letter is important because it is an agent's very first impression of you. The query letter, which appears in the body of the emails you send out, includes the general information about your book, like your intended audience or age range, your word count, title, etc., as well as the synopsis of your story or the pitch. And after consulting with authors in the field, as well as researching online, I also found it was encouraged to include some sort of greeting a greeting that is specifically addressed to the agent you are querying. Although I have now sent out about a dozen query letters, here's one of them. This letter, which addresses an agent named Wendy Gu, includes all the necessary information. I've written my greeting, included the basic information, and pasted below my book's brief synopsis. Reaching out to these agents was a very exciting step. I had spent so much time editing my book and now I was finally submitting it. Just a few days ago, I reached out to about a dozen different agents. Beforehand, I had extensively researched each one I was querying so, that we, so I knew we'd be a good fit. And I also reached out to some who had my childhood favorite books, such as um, Fly Guy, which Wendy Gu represented, and my brother and I were pretty obsessed with those. So I'm nervous and excited to hear back from these agents, but know that I did everything in my power to put forward a story that I am proud of and believe in. Despite this capstone project being over, I still plan to reach out to the remaining agents on my list. I'm crossing my fingers to hopefully get a response back during these next few weeks. In the meantime, the only thing I can do is wait. The project has taught me so much. It's been really rewarding to see how a simple idea turned into an entire story, and with each edit became a better and better book. Everyone who was involved, from the authors I previously mentioned, to my mentor who frequently met with me and provided me with much needed guidance, made this project fun and exciting. Although I hope my publishing aspirations are successful for this story, I know regardless, I can take everything I learned and apply it to my future endeavors. Thank you for attending this presentation. And if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Thank you. Nice job, Lily. Thank you. I love how you walked us through the book so that we could see it firsthand. It was really, really impressive, and I'm just so impressed with the connections that you've made through this process and all of the details. I had no idea what, what went into all of this. So having two young children myself, you know, you read books and you see them, but you have no idea the amount of work that goes into it. So it's just really, yeah. really impressive. Thank you. I'll open up um, the chat feature to our audience. So um, if you click on the bottom of your Zoom screen, you can type questions for Lily or you can make comments and I could read those aloud for you. Allison Coleman, who is your mentor, said, great job, Lily. Oh, I think I see a question from Mrs. Camargo. Um, she says, great job, Lily. My daughter and I love the story. She's wondering if you are planning on doing any illustrations. So at first I was planning on doing some illustrations and I was going to work with one of my friends who's really into art. Um, but because I wasn't taking the self-publishing route, I decided to kind of um, stay off the illustration part and just submit my manuscript. Um, I learned after researching that a lot of agents actually don't like if you do your own illustration. They like to kind of connect you with a professional illustrator um, who has their own vision and you can collaborate with them. So I'm not planning on doing my own illustrations, but hopefully if this reaching out to agents works, I will eventually have a book and an illustrator. That's a good answer. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm kind of remembering all of the children's books that I read through with my kids and it's usually a separate um, author and separate yeah. illustrator because it's such a lengthy process. Um, we have John Costanzo said, amazing work, Lily. Mrs. Camargo said, the story is beautiful. That is really interesting about the illustrator. You are a wonderful artist, too. 
I know a question I got a lot was how I came up with the story. Um, even though it was kind of spur of the moment, it, I kind of connected when I was little, I would go on a lot of hikes and I would always wonder about the changing seasons and ask my parents questions about them. Um, so when I was thinking of a children's book, I kind of wanted to include this story about this bunny um, who was wondering if she could change the season and kind of at the end realize, even though you're really excited for um, a new season that you realize you should appreciate the one right now. And especially in the East Coast, we're really lucky to kind of have the four seasons. Sure. Even though winter takes like six months out of the year, <laughs> it's nice to have snow and then autumn, spring and then summer. So that was how I came up with the idea. Good, good, good. I was a good one too. Would you, um, would you have a specific age group that you would focus your audience towards related to the book or would it be open to kind of all ages? Yeah, so I learned that pictures are kind of broken up into age groups um, because mine is kind of simple rhyme, it would fall under the three to eight age range. Okay. So that's what I submitted it as. Makes sense. Let's see, we have a couple more popping in here. Uh, Mike Costco, great job. Do you intend to continue writing children's books or do you have an interest in writing other genres? Yeah, I'm not really sure yet. Um, I think it would be great to write an actual novel, maybe like an adult novel, but I don't know if I have the stamina to write uh, like a 300 page book. So I'm kind of easing my way into it and decided a picture book would be a good start. To kind of piggyback off of that, I know we have some more questions and I'll get to those. Um, how would you compare this experience, this capstone project to last year's capstone project where you worked on the Power of Girl website? Yeah, so the Power of Girl website, um, that's when I interviewed a bunch of women and kind of recorded their advice for young girls on this online platform. Um, it was similar in the sense that I had to obviously write a story. Um, but it was definitely very different. I went into Power of Girl knowing a lot. Um, I had kind of experience designing my own websites in the past, whereas for this capstone, I think I learned a lot of new skills, particularly the publishing process. I really kind of walked into that not knowing anything. Um, so yeah, this, this project I definitely kind of, I think maybe took, it was a bigger challenge for me, I would say. Do you feel like, the previous um, Capstone project and the Power of Girl kind of helped shape you into yeah. doing this one and made you a little bit more prepared for it? Definitely, yeah. I learned kind of the time management skills that Capstones require, so that definitely helped. Good. Um, let's see, I think this is your dad, Ray Riccio. <laughs> Lily, if you get a book deal, do I retire? <laughs> Love, Dad. I think the answer to that question is yes, right? <laughs> Um, Allison Coleman, do you think this book might turn into a series about Lou? And if so, what other topics can you imagine covering? No pressure. Um, it definitely, I, that definitely crossed my mind, especially because there are four seasons. I could maybe attempt it with each of the seasons, um, but I'm not sure yet. That's a good idea, though. Um, this is from Wenchiel. Excellent vocabulary and your story that children can certainly grow and learn from during your seasonal descriptions, Lily. As a teacher, I would use your book as a model for applying author's craft. Thank you. <laughs> well, keep us updated as you hear back from those editors. It's really exciting. Um, I hope that it all works out. I know that your persistence and your way of approaching is has always done good things for you. I remember last year with Power Girl, so keep us updated. We would all love a copy um, if it gets to where it needs to get to, but it's really exciting and well done. Thank you, and thank you everyone who attended this.